and welcome to Postgrad Processing, the podcast where a recent college graduate talks about the transition from student to worker and all the feelings wrapped up in it. I'm your host, Michaela Graff, and today I'd say I'm feeling nervous and excited, but mostly nervous because it is the first episode, which I hope is made clear by the title and also the order of episodes, but in case you weren't aware, this is the very first episode of PGP, and I really want to take this time today to fill you in on the purpose of this podcast and blog, but we'll get into that, and also just give you a little background information about your host. I'll tell you what I've been doing with my life up until now, what I hope to do with my life moving forward, and maybe just some general information. And the first thing that you'll notice is that I really like to talk. I'm very talkative. It's why I'm starting a podcast and also why I majored in communication. So I'm going to try to keep things short and simple and sweet today. But as this is the first episode, and that's the third time that I've mentioned that, so I don't really know if we're off to a good start so far. Uh, I'm not sure how long it'll go, but well, I'm thinking... I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes. I'll try to keep myself short. I'll try to cut myself off. I'll edit things down for time. Don't worry too much. But I just thought I'd put that out there at the beginning, just in case you're like, man, she just keeps going on and on and on. I'm aware and I'm sorry. And the second thing that I should tell you about myself is that I'm a perfectionist. I have re recorded the beginning to this podcast probably 30 times at least at this point. I started doing it yesterday, ran out of time, and now it's a brand new morning. So hopefully this will go better and I will stop deleting everything. But as long as you're listening to this, that means that I was successful at some point and I'm gonna accept that it will not be perfect. And that's hard. Anyways, I should probably start back at the beginning, answer the essential question, what is postgrad processing? As I mentioned at the beginning, it is not just a podcast, it is also a blog, which will come out on the same day, hopefully. That's the plan. And it's really going to center around this place I call the in-between. It's in between where I was and where I'm going. It's a big transition. And no matter where you are in life or where you have been previously, chances are you are going to come across this in-between space at some point, whether that's a transition between jobs, in relationships, in your work. You're going to come into a free fall where you are moving forward, but it doesn't feel like you're moving at all. And there's so many things, and there's only so many things you can do to ensure a soft landing, but the forces of the world are going to work on you regardless. Gravity is going to pull you down. The winds are going to blow you every which way. So you really aren't going to know exactly where you're going to land until right before you land. And in a lot of ways, I feel like this free fall is very similar to where I am right now. You know, I tried to do a lot of things while I was in college. And yeah, maybe there was more that I could have done. But I tried to work with what I had with my situation and ensure a good landing into the workforce, an easy landing, a nice landing, but there's only so much you can do. There's only so much that's in your power. And, you know, no matter what, I'm just hoping that when I land, I'll hit the ground softly. But before I dive into what I've been doing post-graduation in this free fall, I want to take you back and give you a little information on what I have done pre-graduation. And it all started in kindergarten. I won't actually make you listen to the entire story of my education journey, but I will say it is important that we start in kindergarten because when I was five and I started school 
I only lasted in kindergarten for, I think, about a month, month and a half before they were like, yeah, we need to move you up. So I moved into first grade instead of kindergarten at the age of five, and that has impacted my education by making me a year younger than everyone else, which is fun in some aspects and not so fun in others. Because of this, I graduated high school at 17 and also started college at 17 instead of the typical 18. So by technical terms, I was still a child going into my freshman year and didn't become an adult until halfway through my freshman year. And so there were a lot of decisions that I have to have grace for myself because I was a child and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I mean, think back to when you were 17. Did you really have a clear picture for your life or were you kind of just winging it? Because that's where I was. And you know, there are some 17 year olds, I'm sure, who are pretty confident in what they want to do, in their dreams. You know, I've met plenty of people who dreamed of being a doctor or a nurse since they were young, and so that's what they did. They went to college for their medical degrees, and they made it. Or even just people who, since they were a kid, you know, they were like, I definitely want to major in business, (laughs) actually. Actually, that's not true. I don't think I've ever met anyone who's like, yeah, since I was five, I have wanted to run a company, so I just knew that business was for me immediately. No shade if there are people like that. I'm sure there are. I just haven't met anyone. But you know what I mean. There are some people who have had a clear vision of what they want to do, And for them, I'm very excited because I did not have that clear picture. I picked my major, which originally was psychology, because I was in an AP psychology class and it was fun. And I still stand by that. Psychology is very interesting to me. And I think I could have made it work. I think I could have had a nice career in the field of psychology. But as it turns out, wasn't for me. I was never super confident in that decision. And as the semesters went on, I felt even less confident in that decision. There were a couple factors that kind of made me uneasy in majoring in psychology. The first one is kind of obvious. You hear it from a lot of people, especially when you're majoring in psychology. You might hear this from adults in your life. And that's, what are you going to do with that degree? Unless you go to grad school, probably not much. And I knew this when I decided what my major was going to be. And I was perfectly okay with that. I was like, okay, I'll go to grad school. And then I started college and then I was like, I have to go to grad school. And I, again, I think I could have a lot of fun at grad school. I actually thought about doing grad school for a hot minute during my senior year of college. And one of the big factors, of course, is money. And so I was like, do I really want to be forced to go to grad school? Because if I do that, I'm going to have to go into debt. And lots of people do that. And it's not the end all be all, you know, situation. But it was the forced aspect where I, in some ways, didn't really have a choice to go to grad school or not, that was tricky. And then the other factors were some of the other classes I had to take. I was on track to do occupational therapy, which was going to be less grad school than some of the other degrees, so that's nice. And I, again, still think I could have a really fun time as an occupational therapist. I love helping people, and I've heard really great things about the job, but as I kept taking classes, I was like, ooh, Ooh, I don't know. I just I just don't really feel like this is right for me. I dropped out of anatomy <laughs> the first semester I tried to take it. And then the very next semester, which was the second half of my sophomore year, where I got put in a physics class, which was also required for my degree. And I somehow made it in the end. 
of that semester with an A in the class, but it was also my very first F ever on a test. And I won't get into that whole story right now because it still frustrates me, but the main thing you need to know is as I was going into the semester, going into this class after just dropping out of anatomy the last semester and feeling like, I just don't know if this is the right path for me, I coincidentally was also put in my first communication class. It was, you know, just the mandatory one that you have to take as part of your general education. And it also happened to be public speaking. There were two different classes you could do, which was intro to calm or public speaking. And I got put in public speaking. And just like pretty much everyone else, I was dreading that class. I thought public speaking, this sounds terrible. And looking back, I don't know why I was dreading it so much because I've never had a big problem with speaking in front of people, doing projects, presenting things, but I think I just let, you know, all the negative talk from everyone else get to me and I was like, ew, ew, I'm gonna hate this class, but it's required, so whatever. But the funny thing is that only a few classes into the semester, I realized wait, this is kind of fun. I kind of like this. This is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And that's definitely in part due to the professor I had who was very great. An amazing example of the communication major and what public speaking should look like. And also just very gracious. I really liked her a lot. But yeah, I realized I kind of have fun with this and then I looked into it a little further and I had not been exposed to the communication degree before this. I just had never looked into it. It was not a track that anyone I knew about talked about or was from or had experience in and so I looked into it and I was like wow you can major in this stuff? I love talking. I love being creative and that can be my entire major and it's really funny looking back because when I started high school and everyone was like oh you need to start thinking about your future my first path that I started to play around with was journalism but I didn't look into it too hard because if I had I feel like I probably would have stuck with the communication major from the beginning But you can't go back, you can't fix those things, and I wouldn't necessarily say I regret it because I did end up switching my major during my sophomore year, so I started my junior year as a communication major instead of a psychology major, but obviously I wasn't just going to throw away all the classes, all the hard work I had done up until that point, so I did tack on a psychology minor, so it wasn't all for nothing. And like I said, I'm still very interested in that entire field. So I wouldn't say regret the choices I made, but I do feel confident that if I had learned even a little bit about the communication major from the beginning, I would have chosen it. But none of that really matters now because I made it. I graduated on time despite having that whole crisis in the very middle of my college experience. And now I'm here. I'm in the free fall. And it's been four months since graduation. And I was tempted to say that not much has happened since then, but I kind of forgot that in the very first month after graduation, a lot happened. So I'm going to try to catch you up to speed quickly. In December of last year, I made the decision that I would follow my family back up to Ohio when I graduated in May. So Move date was tentatively May 29th, and I graduated on May 12th, so I had around two weeks after graduation to finish getting all my stuff together, finish tying up all my loose ends, saying all my goodbyes, and it was tough. One of the first things I had to do was perform in my last recital with a studio that I love and miss dearly. I called it home for seven years, and I know that it's still home when I go back, but because of that, it was 
a bittersweet weekend. I actually performed the same day as graduation, so I walked at like 2 p.m. and then ate some Chick-fil-A and headed over to the theater to perform in my first show of the weekend. And it actually wasn't as stressful as that sounds. It was kind of fun. I kind of liked having to go from one thing to the other, so I didn't have a lot of time to think about things or overthink things, really. So I spent the rest of graduation weekend performing in my final recital, potentially ever, which I chose not to think about then, and I still don't really like to think about now. And then I had that next week as my final week on the job at that same studio. So a lot of goodbyes, a lot of processing that I tried to avoid, but I I did a little bit, I will say. Um, But it just, you know, it didn't really feel real at the time. And it's only starting to feel real recently. But that's not the only thing. So that same week, I did have a fun time. I took a little trip with one of my friends to Duluth, Georgia, and I think it was maybe my first overnight trip, just me and a friend, which it's like, you're 21, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but it was really fun. I got to go to a concert. I got to, again, forget about the fact that in a week I would no longer be in the state and just relax for a little while. So that was fun. Then, like I said, the next week was moving week, sort of. So, as I mentioned, I lived in Georgia, and the last weekend of May, I had a wedding that I was a part of in Tennessee. So, I got to see one of my really close friends get married, which was awesome. It just so happened to coincide with the same weekend that we were officially moving. Our stuff, most of our stuff had been moved back in March to Ohio, but, you know, we had everything that we'd been living off of, which was too much, it turned out, but, you know, we dealt with it. So, Friday of the last weekend of May, we load up our two vehicles, go to Tennessee, I have rehearsal dinner, get to hang out with the girls on Saturday, everything, kind of like have our bachelorette party, have the wedding on Sunday, And then Monday, repack up everything that we had gotten out and move the rest of the way to Ohio. So it was a kind of in the middle split situation. So I guess it was kind of nice not having to do the whole 10, 11 hour trip in one go, but it was still a lot. So May 29th is when we finally move to Ohio and arrive there. And then of course, anyone who's ever done a pretty big move (laughs) knows that unpacking is not easy, reorganizing is not easy, and then when you're doing that with family, sometimes it's even harder. So those first few weeks of June are kind of a blur because it was just unpacking, getting settled, but also everyone wants to see you because you've moved back home and you haven't been here for so long, which we understand and I understand, but it was just a lot. And it was also a lot for me because though I was moving to Ohio with my family, there was not a room for me in their house, which I knew of. We had plans that we are rearranging now, let's put it that way. (laughs) But, you know, so I was helping everyone unpack their things, but then I was like, well, I'm kind of just a floater right now, like floating between houses. I don't have my own room yet. I don't have anywhere to put my stuff. So that was interesting. And we didn't really even have enough time to get settled. We were in Ohio for two weeks and then we had to go back to Georgia for the last two weeks of June while my sisters did things with our church back there. And um, it was fun. And I actually got there in really good timing to where I got to be a part of a ceremony for an award I received back in May. And, you know, we were going to arrange things where I'd be there on Zoom and anything, but it just so happened that they're like, hey, the awards are in. Can we set up something? And I was like, surprise, I'm back in town. So things worked out really nice. And then 
end of June, we come back up to Ohio and that's where things started to slow down. So, you know, enough of that. I can catch you up. We're in September now. So for the past couple months, I've been applying to jobs. I've been trying to find things to do around here to keep myself busy and not going insane from the job applying process, which don't worry, we will definitely get into that in uh, future episodes because I have a lot of thoughts. I've applied to a lot of jobs and spoiler alert, I don't have one yet. So that's fun. And real quick before I move on, I just want to make a note that... I am very grateful for where I am now and for the support that I've received from friends and family that has allowed me to have a fun summer. It was busy. It was not uneventful, but it was still relaxing in a way. And it's been a summer where I didn't have to work. I didn't have to worry about school or anything like that. And I haven't had that in a really long time. So I'm very grateful, but at the same time, not everything has been easy and laid back, chill. You know, I have a lot of things to be stressed about, and trust me, I am stressed about them. You know, not being sure about where I'm living right now, or how long I'm going to be in Ohio. Also, the big one, not having a job yet. So, I've got plenty of worries, And I can't wait to share them with you all. (laughs) And hopefully, you know, you will find something to relate to. And also, it will be relieving for both of us. Which brings me back to the purpose of this blogcast, if you will. I want to have a place where I can let out all my thoughts and process through them. And I hope that There will be people who have been in similar situations or are in similar situations who can also process through this podcast, hence the name, Postgrad Processing. And like I mentioned, there is a blog portion and a podcast portion. So by the time you're hearing this, the first post on my blog, Postgrad Processing, will have come out, and then this will be coming out after, and it will also be linked in the blog, so you might have actually come from there. You might already know that, and that'd be great, but in case you don't, in case you came here first, there is also a blog, and there will be new posts every Saturday and new episodes. Next week, we'll be talking about job applications like I hinted at earlier because I just think that's a crucial topic that we might as well get out of the way first and foremost. So look forward to that. For now, this has been Postgrad Processing. I'm your host, Michaela Graf, and I'll see you again next week with more stories and a lot more feelings. Stay cool.